Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says to his followers, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. So what is this special unworldly peace which Jesus gives? The peace that makes Christians unafraid in this world, unafraid to love other people. It's Jesus himself. Jesus gives himself. He gives his spirit, which is to say he gives us of himself. And Jesus describes this gift in different ways, but one way is to use this word peace. He certainly was not talking about the absence of warfare in this world. There has always been, will always be, wars and rumors of wars. And he's not just talking about an absence of suffering and strife from floodwaters and tornadoes and political dissension and the everyday stress of raising children and going to work and to school and paying the bills and maintaining relationships. No, he's talking about more than just a general feeling of well-being, as desirable as that may be. He's talking about giving us his spirit, the gift of himself, the words truth and light and life also describe that gift of Jesus. In Galatians, the Apostle Paul talks more about the fruits of that spirit as love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. And when those fruits are experienced in our lives, it's evidence of Christ's presence and the gift of his spirit. You now pastors often read verses from John 14 at funerals. Peace is one of those blessings of the souls at rest. But of course, funeral sermons are for the living, for those of us who are still on our journey here on earth. The peace Jesus gives is for the living, for those who have died to the ways of this world, the ways of the world that teach us to fear other people who are different from us rather than to love them. The peace of Jesus is more than a feeling. It's an attitude. The world can't give it the world can't take it away. Jesus comes to us through the word and the sacraments and he dwells within us. He's present for all of our life experiences, strengthening us, enabling us to perceive the world in a different way, the way that God does. The Spirit wants to be a part of everything that we say, everything that we do. And even painful experiences lose their sharpness with that awareness. At a Christian funeral, for example, when others might be in despair, Jesus says rejoice and look at things the way that I do, the way they really are. You know, over the last 22 years as a pastor, I can tell you some of the most heartfelt joy and laughter I have experienced has been with families who mix tears and laughter as they reminisce, as they remember their loved ones who have died. Because in a very real way, the bond we share with Christian loved ones never dies. Jesus bequeaths to us his spirit, and that spirit, that peace, 
binds us together in a holy and mystical communion which never ends. So no longer incarnate in his own earthly body, the spirit of Jesus makes his home in your body and becomes incarnate again and again as you interact with that person in the next cubicle at work or sitting at the next desk at school with your friends and your neighbors, with strangers you meet on the street or at HEB. The Holy Spirit is the form Jesus takes in order to remain in the world. You see, God didn't become human and reveal himself in human form just for folks who lived 2,000 years ago in Palestine. No, he continues to be present in the world via his spirit in you and me. Next Sunday, little baby Blake Lee Rhodes will be baptized here at Emmanuel and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit at the 11 o'clock service. At the 845 service next week and then again at 11 the following week, we will confirm 12 of our young people. 12 of our young people will affirm their baptism through the rite of confirmation and listen to the promise of God found in Acts chapter 2. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord God has called to him." End quote. See, the gift of God's Spirit is not a private gift. It's personal, but it's not private. Because as children grow up in the Word, as members of the body of Christ, hearing the word and keeping the word and seeing it enacted by their parents and sponsors and brothers and sisters in Christ who love the Lord, they know that they're loved and that they will never be alone, that they're part of a family, a holy communion, the church, the body of Christ on earth. And this ongoing incarnation of God has huge implications for our lives. The love of God and the word of Christ remain immaterial or irrelevant until that spirit acts through the body in which it is present. My sinful nature and yours resists the gifts of the spirit. Love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, self-control, those are not my human nature. That's God's nature that the baptized child of God must daily put on. Brothers and sisters in Christ, together, you and I, we are the body of Christ on earth. And the Spirit of Jesus takes on human flesh when he acts through you and me. And so, yes, in one sense, that incarnation of God was a once and for all time event when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But in another sense, it continues until Christ comes again. And here and now, Christ comes when Christians allow his spirit to rule their lives. Keeping his word, loving other people amounts to the same thing. When we keep his word and love other people, we demonstrate to the world that Christ dwells in us. May God grant to each of us the grace and the peace that is ours as we embody that gift ourselves and as we recognize it in others as we thank praise honor and serve our lord and savior jesus christ as we gather and worship and grow in the word 
and serve God by serving people. Amen.